Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Mike Acosta from BPM Sounds, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create your own custom 808 bass drum using Ableton Live's internal synth operator. So let's get started. All right, so here we are in Ableton Live 10, and the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna grab an instrument rack, and I'm going to drop it on this empty MIDI track here. So you can see nothing there and the reason for this is we're going to put operator inside this rack but we're also going to be adding in additional plugins like compression saturation and we want to be able to have a way to save all of that as one whole rack so that we can use this instrument again in future projects so that's why we start with the instrument rack so once we have that down there now we could take our operator synth here and we're going to go ahead and drop it right inside the instrument rack and there's the operator synth. So we have it connected to my MIDI keyboard, so now I can play it. Okay, real simple. So we have our pattern here, and if I was to hit play right now, okay, it's just playing the simple sine wave. So now what we wanna do is in the operator synth, we're only going to use oscillator A, so we need to make sure that we turn off the additional three oscillators. So we're going to click right here on B, and we're going to turn that off, click turn off C, and turn off D. And now we're back here just on oscillator A. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to set the oscillator in operator to a sine wave, which it already is, so you can do that right here under the wave. But for 808s, I actually like using the sine 8-bit. So this is basically gonna crush it down a little bit. And if I trigger it, I personally like that because it gives a little bit more edginess uh, to the tone. Now, th what we're gonna do next is we need to switch on the pitch envelope and adjust the amount to taste. So what we're gonna do is go right here to our pitch envelope section. We're gonna switch that on. And now that we have this here, we can make an adjustment to the actual pitch envelope. And so what we want to do is we want to take the envelope and we're going to increase it to, let's say, 50 to 90, and then we're going to set the peak to about 23. All right, so there's our pitch envelope. Right now I have it at 70, so let's see what it sounds like. Put it a little higher. All right, so what this is doing is actually adding a little bit of that attack, some of that, that punch on the front end. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically take the peak of that and put it at 23. So we're just raising it up just a little bit right here. So now if we play it, Okay, you can kind of hear that it's starting to turn into a kick drum a little bit, but let's keep moving on. The next part was we're going to move into the filter section here. All right, so on the filter section, what we want to do is I normally like to put the envelope on the filter to a negative value to kind of darken the attack for a much more muffled uh, type of sound on my kick drum. So I'm going to take the envelope here and I'm going to probably bring it down to about minus 60. And if we play it, so it just rolls off a little bit of that high end on the, on the initial attack there. And that's kind of like what I want. I want it a little bit darker. Then what I like to do is I like to go right here under the shaper and I like to add the hard option. And this basically will give me a much more aggressive tone. So now you can hear a huge difference. Now I want to even drive it a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is now take the shape drive and I'm going to increase that until it sounds good to me. So that's cool. Um, again, all of this is totally to taste. You don't have to do it exactly this way. It's all about what you feel is going to work best for you. So this is what I like to do to make my 808s, but you can totally experiment with these. There's no really wrong way to do this. It's all about experimentation and what works best. 
All right, so now if we play this, you notice that it's short. So we need to get that boominess added on the end there. And the way that we do that is we come back to oscillator A, and we're going to adjust the release time of the sine wave. And so usually what I like to do is I like to kind of kick that up. So let's take a look at what works. C3 is usually where I like to go. All right, let's try that. And then we can play it and we can make adjustments. Again, it's all to taste. So I'm also going to bring down the sustain on here a little bit. All right, that should work. And now if we play it, Now, we're going to add on to this to really customize and shape the overall tone of our 808 as well. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add a saturator. So we'll go over here to Ableton's audio effects. And the easiest thing to do is open up saturator. And here's a preset called a bit warmer that works well. Go ahead and drop that right in there. Now, I'm going to play it again without it. And let me set the wet mix to 100. So here it is dry. All right, now we're going to turn on the saturator. And right now the mix is at 100% wet. You can hear that it's knocking a little bit harder. And there's a little bit of more warmth and bottom on that low end. Um, and that's just from the saturation adding those lower end harmonics and stuff, which is great. Next, what I like to do is I usually like to add a compressor after this just to control the dynamics a bit. So I am going to use Ableton's glue compressor. So let's jump up here and grab the glue compressor. We're going to drop that right after the saturator. And I don't want to take away from the attack. I just want to control that boominess on the end a little bit. That works. Now, the last thing that I usually like to add is I want to make sure that always that my 808 is in mono. So if you go to the utility section here, just grab the base mono and drop that right at the end there and then just switch mono right here. Now, this will make sure that your 808 kick drum is 100% in mono. Now, this is essentially our 808. Let's play it and see. All right, so there we go. Simple, simple 808 that we've put together now, playing with our drums, it works great. And now that we have all of these settings here, obviously you want to be able to save this. So if you click on the little tabs here, you'll see that you have all of these macro knobs and you've got a little icon here with a little disk drive. Now you can click this, and when you click it, notice that it makes a little instrument rack over here. Now you can save it name it whatever you like, and you'll be able to pull this up anytime in the future. So there you go. That's how to make an 808 drum within Ableton Live using the operator synth. I hope this was helpful. Uh, there's Again, there's really no wrong way to doing this. You can totally use additional plugins. Like if you wanted to throw in more distortion, you can totally use like the guitar cabinet uh, effect right over here from Ableton. That's always a great effect. You can also use erosion, which is a really great effect that you can add on there. So many different ways to get custom sounds. Make sure you experiment. That's the great thing about music is that there's no really wrong way. So experiment, try different things, have fun with it. I hope you enjoyed this. My name is Mike Acosta from BPM Sounds, and I will see you in the next video.